Uh, so as you've heard uh, so far from Martin, uh, already you can will have heard that um, the process of generating single cell expression data is quite involved and all aspects of that workflow of going from cells in some sort of natural state or medium uh, to a sequencing library has lots of different steps which can cause different biases and uh, effects on the ultimate data that we, uh, we receive. From there, then there's that, uh, from, uh, once we've obtained reads from a sequencing machine, then there's the process of quantifying expression from those at a cell level and at a gene or other feature level. And so once we've got an expression matrix, as uh, Martin's described, whether that's measuring uh, expression in terms of molecule counts or UMIs or uh, read counts in a way that's come from full transcripts that's more similar to, to bulk RNA-seq, uh, then we've got this big matrix of gene expression values by cell, uh, for each cell, and at that point we need to do some serious QC work to make sure that the cells and genes we retain are appropriate for the downstream analyses that we want to do. If we don't do that, then we're going to be including a lot of garbage in, uh, in what we analyze, uh, which can really upset the sort of analyses that, or can really upset the conclusions that we might be able to draw from the data. And so uh, we produced the SCADA package to try and make it easier to do a lot of these sort of, in a sense, boring things, but really important things at the start of an analysis um, these are things that we really need to do on every data set regardless of the biological aims of the study and something that we need to, to get right uh, in order to get valid conclusions at the end of the whole analysis process. And so SCADA allows us to do several things uh, quite rapidly and easily, at least that's the aim of it. So if it's not your experience using it, let me know and I'll try to, um, you know, improve things for you. And so what it gives us is the ability to do automated computation of a lot of quality control metrics that we can use for filtering out cells and genes. Um, if we have a protocol uh, that produces full-length transcript data, then it does give us a, a pipeline for going directly from FASTQ files using Salmon or Callisto to an expression matrix in a very streamlined way. Um, importantly, it gives us a a data format that's standardized. And so Martin alluded to that uh, when he said that, you know, as well as the expression matrix, we have a lot of metadata associated with both the cells and the genes. And what we want is an organized way uh, to manage that data so that we don't inadvertently, through an analysis process, where we're inevitably writing lines and lines of code and manipulating things. We don't want to lose track of which metadata belongs to which cells or which metadata belongs to which genes. And the data format that I'll describe in a minute gives us a way of keeping everything organized uh, and builds on uh, what's been developed in the Bioconductor project uh, for, for bioinformatics in genomics uh, analyses. Throughout the QC process, we want to be you know, interacting with our data sets and visualizing it in different ways to try and get a feel of what are the important sources of variation, what does our data look like, what cells are performing well or poorly, and so there are a lot of visualization uh, functions available in SCADA. And the nice thing about working in R in this framework is that um, once we've sort of QC'd our data in SCADA in this setting, then there are lots of downstream analysis tools like M3Drop, like SC3 developed from Martin's group and other tools from many other groups that work in the Bioconductor R uh, universe. And so working with SCADA in this way, then we have sort of immediate access to a lot of tools that have been developed for downstream analysis, but that assume that you're starting with a nicely QC data set. Um, so the broad workflow is sort of outlined in this figure here. So at the top, we're starting with the sort of raw expression data in some sense. And so if you have um, a full length transcript protocol like SmartSeq2, um, then we can start with the raw reads in FASTQ format and from within SCADA, if it suits you, uh, you can run Callisto or Salmon and quite easily read in uh, the data 
quantified by either of these methods into an expression matrix in this SCE set object. On the other hand, if we have um, summarized gene expression values produced any which way, so that might be from the UMI sort of pipelines that we've, we've talked about or any other method, feature counts, whatever suits, uh, then these can be read in as a matrix and uh, so that we can construct this data object um, in our, ourselves relatively easily. And so the, the foundation of the SCADA approach is this object called an SCE set, so it stands for a single cell expression set. Um, and this is that data object that keeps everything organized for us. So the idea is this contains what we call assay data, so the expression values, genes um, by cells. It contains phenotype data, which is how we, in the sort of bioconductor language, talk about the cell metadata. And it contains feature data, which is the, the gene metadata that we want to attach uh, and keep consistent in our analyses. Um, so they're the things that you're sort of, as end users, you're most likely to interact with. You want to look up sort of cell metrics and other metadata about the cells, like what experimental condition did it come under, and they're the things we will use a lot in plotting to look at our data. Um, feature data tells you about the genes, typically, of course, and so you know, if we want to filter out things by chromosome or um, gene biotype or something like that, then we can have that available for us. Um, there's a lot more sort of under the hood in the in the object, which is not as obvious to the user. It doesn't is not doesn't need to be. It's not designed for you necessarily, unless you really want to do that. But it does allow us to have things or make things easier, like interaction with um, the SC3 tool for clustering. And so um, there are some things going on under the hood, so that you can pass uh, an, S an SCE set object. Um, from SCADA to SC3 and do your clustering in this sort of streamlined way. So once we've got our data in this SCE set object, then the first step typically is to apply this function called calculate QC metrics, which does what it says. Um, it, in an automated way, calculates a lot of QC metrics that we find useful for um, QCing cells and genes. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side there, a lot of different plotting functions, and uh, particularly PlotQC uh, has a number of different QC uh, types of plots that can be useful for getting different views on the quality of our data. Um, we can do cell level sort of visualizations with plot PCA and plot TSNE, uh, plot diffusion map as well uh, for a few different approaches for exploring how the cells uh, look in a reduced dimension space. And there's more there as well. Um, so once we sort of calculate QC metrics, had a look at our data, then we can filter out quite easily. And again, that using this object, make sure that when we do the filtering, if we filter out particular cells, then we do appropriate filtering of the cell metadata as well. So all the appropriate information uh, is retained downstream. Uh, then there are simple normalization methods made easy uh, with SCADA, particularly connecting to another package called SCRAN, developed by Aaron Lund and John Marioni, um, which gives single cell size factor uh, normalization approaches, which we'll discuss in detail later on. Um, and after sort of working through this, this general workflow, then we can get down to a nice filtered and normalized SCE set, um, which is, you know, got rid of the cells that we don't think are worthwhile taking into downstream analyses has worked through um, you know, genes that are not expressed at all and not expressed sufficiently to be interesting downstream. And then we've got um, you know, our data set ready for actually uh, the downstream modeling and statistical analysis that we want to do to answer the scientific questions that we're interested in. Uh, so I mentioned in passing that there are a couple of sort of bits of terminology that pop up in SCADA that are sort of uh, come from this history in bioconductor and the way it's been built up. So in bioconductor terminology, we assay numerous features for a number of samples. So in our context, the features we're looking at are typically going to be genes. I mean, they could be transcripts. They could be arbitrary genomic regions. But uh, typically, if you see features, when discussing SCADA, we that, think of that as genes. And obviously, the samples that we're thinking about, in our case, are individual cells. Um, so I think that's all we need to know there. When we're building up the SCE set class, it has three, it, three things that have to be in an SCE set object. So one is an expression matrix. 
and so that's rows represent genes, columns represent cells, and the entries are the expression values uh, for the cell and gene combination. And we can get to this in more detail, but typically this should be on the log scale. So we will typically, so we can use visualization clustering methods, which typically assume some sort of Gaussian behavior. If we start with counts or molecule counts or something like that, we will want to put them on a log scale so that they look more normal, even accounting for the dropouts and the increased zeros that we have in, in single cell data. Um, but the express slot has to be an SCE set class object, and that contains the expression data we're thinking about. Uh, then we have pheno data, which is the cell level metadata. So that's basically takes the form of a matrix or a data frame uh, where the rows represent cells, and then the different columns can represent different variables that we've measured on those cells. So that could be experimental condition, the QC metrics, and all that stuff. And the feature data is a data, data frame uh, giving information about the genes. Um, and that's about it. Uh, there's a lot more stuff we can add uh, and do add at various different points in analyses, um, but that's the sort of the crux of the thing. And so the first step, once we've obtained, an, say, an expression matrix, is to build this SE set uh, object, which we can do in a couple of lines of code, and then we can apply the methods to do our QC. So the next step is actually using this framework to do QC on UMI data, and for that I'll pass over to Vlad. Uh, but before I do, are there any questions on any of that? Or stuff? Yes. Uh, so they, yeah, so by default, we add an offset of one, I mean, that can be tweaked, so if you prefer a different offset. Um, it's kind of nice adding an offset of one, because obviously if you have a you know, log of zero count plus one, then it stays as zero, so in the sort of expression data you can see on the log scale, which data were originally zeros, but, and yeah. if you have different conditions, mm. Uh, you almost always want to include them in one object, and that's because, A, mostly for visualization, we want to be able to see how, the, say, different populations of cells look in comparison to each other, so in one plot. Um, of course, once you've got it in a big, um, everything in, in sort of your one object, then you can subset down to uh, different different conditions. So if you want to say, I want to do a Tisney plot of everything, you can do that, and then say, okay, now I just want to look at my you know, CD43 positive cells, then I'll subset to that and produce the plot. And so this subset can be done on the fly, and um, that's, the, that's the way I would, I would do that. Um, downstream, when it comes to normalization, then it's very important to have everything included in one object, um, because you can imagine you need to have your, say, different experimental conditions or batches gathered together in order to be able to tell uh, or normalize appropriately so that you're accounting for some differences between cell types based on you know, whatever factors, yeah. Um, 